if you constantly feel like you're not good enough yet, like you need to keep improving to be truly worthy, then this message is for you. I was feeling really low and burnt out a couple of weeks ago. And I was doing some journaling, doing my inner work, trying to work through those thoughts and feelings. But I was like, ah, I'm just not getting out of this loop. And then I'm still writing and I asked myself, why do I feel like I'm never where I want to be, even though I'm constantly improving? I'm constantly self-improving every day. Every day I'm striving to be a better version of myself, but it's never enough. I'm stuck on this wheel eternally. And that's when it hit me that you can't self-improve your way to self-worth. Ah! So after immediately having this thought, I panicked <laughs> because I was thinking, well, if my self-worth isn't tied to self-improvement and I'm not feeling, I'm feeling inherently worthy and enough, am I going to want to get better? Am I going to want to improve? I don't think so. Like that was my first thought and it was really scary because I'm like, uh, uh. but then I was thinking about how our thoughts are what we create. We create our own reality with our thoughts. And what I had been manifesting was that I'm not worthy yet. I need to keep improving. I need to keep improving every day. It's like, okay, I just need to be 5% better to be worthy of this. I need to be 10% better to be worthy of that. And where does that end? When do I say that I am good enough for the things that I want today now so that they can come in? Because I'm eternally pushing them off by saying, oh, I need to be better here and before this can happen, or I'm not quite there yet. I need to get better at this before I can do that. And that was holding me back. I also realized that self-improvement is like the sneakiest way to really have low self-worth. And if you had asked me about this a month ago or even a few weeks ago, I'd be like, oh yeah, I have high self-worth. Like I, I'm worthy. But girl, self-improvement is the ultimate trap. That's how the Virgos be hiding. I'm a Virgo rising, but you are hiding behind this self-improvement scheme to avoid actually feeling worthy of something like you're using self-improvement as an excuse to not feel worthy and it's a good one to me like i was like dang like i really had myself full i would have never thought i thought i was like worthy but it shows up in a lot of people in different ways and once i realized this i started looking it up on youtube i'm like there's got to be some other people talking about this self-improve your way to self-worth and i didn't see a lot i saw a couple but I realized that's how it was manifesting in my life, me feeling unworthy was I was using self-improvement as an excuse. And I was basically putting on this performance all the time and I just got burned out from trying to perform my way into worthiness when no, I am inherently worthy. I am inherently worthy of the things that I desire just because I exist. That is more than enough. And this is what I realized that there's a difference between self-confidence and self-worth. Self-confidence, now that is tied to, you know, your achievements, to you doing your daily habits and your self-confidence goes up and down based off of your successes, your wins and your losses, but your self-worth is inherent. And that is something that should never change. You should always feel that you are worthy and you have to know that difference between self-worth and self-confidence. And it's okay for your self-confidence and also like I call that like self-esteem, self-confidence, self-esteem. It's okay for that to go up and down because that's just what happens because we're human. But your self-worth should always stay the same because we are inherently worthy. Worthiness isn't something that comes from our external. It's something internal. And that's why it's so important to have that ex distinction of self-esteem or self-confidence and self-worth because you always have to have that something internally um, that is unshakable and cannot be affected by the outside world because you can't control the outside. You can only control yourself. So self-worth is something that is internal and you can't let anybody else or any outside circumstance throw that off or let you feel like you're not worthy because you are. And then as I was watching content around this, and uh, I realized that because I am worthy, I make good choices because I am worthy. I do want to go to the gym because I am worthy. I do want to wake up at 6 a.m. Not 
to be worthy, I will wake up at 6 a.m. I am trying to be worthy, so I am waking up at 6 a.m. I am trying to be worthy, so I am going to the gym. No, because I am worthy, because I am good enough, because I deserve the best, I am going to do those things. It just shifts. It's just a mindset shift. When you believe you are worthy, so will everyone else. And even if somebody doesn't, who cares? Because you know internally that you are worthy just by existing. I know my worth and I take action just because I know how worthy I am. That is the thought process. Ask yourself where you've been thinking, oh, if I just change this, then I can get this. If I just do this a little bit better, then I can have this. You want to change your old habits because you are worthy of holding yourself to a higher standard, not because you have to act. While I was doing my research on worthiness, I came across this book by Jamie Kern Lima called Worthy. And it literally just came out like a few weeks ago. And it's about worthiness and how to believe you are enough. And I watched her podcast interview with, I don't know, some, somebody. And I was like, man, I need to get this book. And so I literally went out the next day to Target to get this book. And I'm not done with it. It's good though. And I really think it's a good read if you are struggling with worthiness or you realize that you could just be better in feeling worthy. I also have this book linked down below too for you to grab. But I will tell you guys this, this is crazy. Well, it's not completely crazy, but for me, I can alchemize things so quickly. Um, if I just do my inner work, which is what I did, which is where I, I'm gonna do a video on my inner work routine, I guess. Um, but all I have to do is just let out where all my limiting beliefs are, whatever the story is that I have now, and rewrite that and ask God to give me clarity and just keep writing. And I'll basically channel messages. And then also I'll do some looking on YouTube or online and I will know everything I need to know to alchemize it. And it might take me a day or two, but basically so far it's crazy as I'm reading this book, everything that I realized was something that I basically had already channeled the very first day, but I'm still excited to keep reading this because I think there's more and there's some exercises as I get deeper into the book. And also it's some inspo as I will be writing my first book this year, um, just in the style. I like the way she writes. She writes kind of similar to how I do. So anyways, all right, let's get into a framework for improving your self-worth. Number one, radical self-acceptance. Accept yourself completely as you are right now, flaws and all. Realize that your worth is not dependent on any intrinsic uh, achievements or anything outside yourself, that it is all in you. Practice self-compassion and talk to yourself like you would a good friend. Like your friend, you wouldn't say, you're unworthy because <laughs> you didn't, you know, make $10,000 this month, you useless person. Like you wouldn't talk to your friends that way. They're everybody, a lot of the people that we love and are, love and care about in our life, we feel that they are worthy just for existing, not because they have X amount of degrees or they have this job or they were on the Forbes under 40 list. Like, no, that's not why you love them. That's not why they are worthy. It's, it's beyond that. It's deeper or inside. Number two, reframe. Wait, I just realized the camera's like slightly shifted. So it's funny that number two is re reframe self-criticism. Reframe self-criticism. Notice when you're being really overcritical of yourself and stop. And if you wouldn't say it to a good friend, you shouldn't be saying it to yourself. That's something I started, you know, applying a few years ago. I just got really good at being, <laughs> what, do I, what would I call it? What's that one? It's like constructive constructively criticized myself but still if you wouldn't say it to a friend and as often as you would say it to your friend don't do it to you number three separate your self-worth from outcomes you have to detach your inherent worth from your goals and the outcome of situations of course we want to strive for excellence but we're not going to hinge our worth as a person on those outcomes celebrate the effort and the growth not just the achievements because we are going to have a lot of journeys. We are going to um, go through a lot of things in our life. And if you're always just looking for that um, hit, for the achievement, for the win, for the end of something, you're not going to have a lot of lot to celebrate. But if you celebrate the growth, if you celebrate the, you know, just consistency, you're going to have a lot more joy.
Number four, cultivate supportive relationships. Surround yourself with people who care about you for who you are and who lift you up, not bring you down. Like, I don't need anybody in my life being more critical of me than me because I got that lock. Like, not saying I can't be held accountable, but I don't need anybody in my life being more critical and judgmental and hard on me than I am. Besides, like, when it's truly time to, you know, check me. Number five, explore your values and purpose. Get clear on what really matters to you intrinsically. Like, what do you really value you truly? I remember that there was actually, I guess, a lot of things that I used to do that were things that didn't really matter to me or I didn't truly value, but I did them because they mattered to other people and they made other people happy. And I had to pay the price because I'm the one living this life in this body. Um, so... What truly matters to you? Like, I know what really matters to me is being able to create my own schedule, working for myself, um, being free to wake up when I want a lot of the days. Like, that's what really matters to me. Being able to create things and to help other people and build community. Those are the things that really matter to me. I don't care about, like the titles and like when I was an engineer but it's like ooh engineer like it made me seem so smart and accomplished and disciplined but now that I have a different title I still am that girl so um what really matters to you and you have to lean into that number six give back and be of service so one of the things actually Jamie talked about either in the podcast or in the book she talked about how um it's really good to think about all the good that you're doing for other people and not be so self-absorbed like Stop thinking that everybody's always thinking about you. Stop being so self-absorbed and thinking that it's all about you. It's not. And I also remember watching this TEDx talk and there was this lady talking about ego. And she remember her mom saying like, this is not about you, girl. Like nobody cares. Like it is not that serious. <laughs> but like, it's not about you. And you have to get out of your own way. Stop being so self-absorbed. Stop being so self-conscious and just be of service to people because when you're helping somebody like you have to put your needs to the side a bit so allow yourself to be of service so that you can get out of your own way and also helping others really reinforces like your inherent value when you help other people you feel so full after that and you're like wow like I did that and it doesn't even have to be anything big but you know it's still something that you did for others and it helped them and it mattered number seven be willing to let go you have to release the demands for your perfection and approval. Like, just let it go, you know, create what you want to create, do what you want to do, and just, just do it and just let it go. Like, it's not that serious. It's really not. We're on a rock, babe. We are in a rock flying through space that is so big, we can't even literally, like, comprehend how big. <laughs> this universe is so like it's not that serious it just let go allow yourself to be imperfect and flawed nobody is perfect and honestly people like you better when you do have some flaws because it lets them know that you're being genuine you're being yourself when anybody's too perfect too robotic honestly if you notice um this is kind of a tangent but i'm gonna say it anyway because i want to um if you notice that like some of the people that are too perfect people get really bored with them. Like they get really bored with them. And also they'll start making up stories for them and wishing them ill will. They're like, they're too perfect. Like something's gotta be going on. And like, they must have this. Like, so you can't win. You can't, you can't even win if you are perfect because people know it's not real. They know that's not possible. So then they're really going to be looking for the, for the cracks. They're going to be like, well, she's too perfect. So just be yourself and let your imperfections shine through because they make you who you are. Practice being vulnerable because being vulnerable is so courageous. Like it's literally a superpower when you can be vulnerable. And that's really it. I mean, the key is just developing that inherent self-worth that is completely unshakable by anything. Um, and it really will motivate you to be better because you will have a higher standard for yourself because you know that you already are worthy and you won't feel like you're performing to get to that worthiness and looking for somebody or something outside of yourself to give you that validation that you're worthy. No, you will give it to yourself. So just remember that you are worthy, period. 
Thanks for watching. Bye.